Today we're going to be testing two fabulous Ferraris. One is nearly 50 years old and the other is brand new. Now I've been in this business for what, over 27 years and I've driven just about every iteration of new Ferrari. But there is one Ferrari that has always eluded me. In fact, it is the reason I love Ferraris and it is the 246 GT. But as of today, that will change. And that's due to the kindness of Mr. Roger Dudding, who owns Studio 434 here in North London in Potter's Bar. And Roger has a personal collection of over 460 classic cars. Amongst Roger's collection are the Ferrari 328 GTS and the Ferrari F355. Two cars very similar to the Ferraris I've owned myself. And today he's going to allow me to drive my green car. And that's his 246 GT. First time behind the wheel of a Dino 246 GT. But you know, it's not what I thought because I'm six foot tall and I thought, God, this will be really cramped. But actually it's not. I've even got space to keep my hat on in a GTS. And uh, I love the functionality of it. Very Ferrari. Everything is driver focused. And this steering wheel is just for the purpose of steering. No fancy buttons here. The highlight of any Dino has got to be this, this chrome gated manual gearbox. Oh, how nice it would be to have that in modern Ferraris. Can't wait to drive it. I've got these uh, driving doves because this is what they did in the 70s and this is a an early 70s car, I think it's a 1971 stroke 72, who cares? Um, you just got to get into the moment, haven't you? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Very first drive, so let's oh, listen to that engine. Oh, right. Now, I don't know, those of you who are old enough to remember Tony Curtis and the Persuaders, I'm now putting myself in the position of Tony Curtis. I'm living the persuaders again. Having driven Ferraris, especially old Ferraris before, you tend to need to give the car time to warm up, especially the gearboxes. With a car of this age in these days, I mean, it's not particularly fast. You'll probably do 60 in about six point something seconds and maybe 140-ish miles an hour. But you wouldn't buy a car like this just to drive fast. It's not about brute horsepower, it's just about being engaged with the whole thing. It's quite responsive on the throttle. So I'm just beginning to think now that in 1972, this was a pretty fast car. And getting back into the spirit of what I call real driving, you haven't got all that electronic gadgetry that you've got in new cars to compensate for you doing this wrong or that wrong. This is like, it's an up to you car. And you've got to get your skills back in place. Those old skills of double declutching and heating and towing and all those sorts of things at pretty average speed to make this car really work with you. And what you tend to find, and certainly what I find with Ferraris and always have done, is that the faster you drive them, the better they feel. So what we've got is a great setup. It's a light car, we've got a mid-engine. It's not too much power, just a responsive throttle. Kind of done the Ferrari way. I didn't know you were gonna be this good. It really wants to be driven like a Ferrari, to be honest. It loves to go right up the rev range then you know you're really enjoying yourself. And not only are you hitting the sweet spot, but the car's hitting the sweet spot too. Oh, I love it. Why do I love it so much? 
big thanks goes out to Roger Dudding and his team at Studio 434 here for affording us the wonderful opportunity to drive this 246 GT. Now we're going to fast forward to 2021 and the Ferrari F8 Tributo. Now that car can do 211 miles an hour. So we're going to be asking ourselves, is that performance really usable on modern day roads? The Ferrari F8 Tributo is Ferrari's latest mid-rear engine sports car. This is the best and probably last technical expression of this modern day Ferrari icon. The F8 Tributo features state-of-the-art aerodynamics, much of it derived from Ferrari's involvement in GT racing. The Tributo is 10% more aerodynamically efficient than its predecessor, the 488 GTB. It's also 40 kilograms lighter. The multi-award winning twin-turbo V8 engine generates 710 brake horsepower and 770 newton meters of torque, propelling the car from 0 to 62 miles an hour in an astonishing 2.89 seconds and to a top speed of 211 miles per hour. How do you really make the most of 710 brake horsepower, 770 newton meters of torque, and knowing deep down this car can do over 211 miles an hour. I think you have to experience a car with this level of performance to understand why a supercar can make sense on public roads with speed restrictions and everything else because you can have so much more fun per mile. I think there's two cars sitting ahead of me there and I just know that this car is capable of taking not just one but both of them at its very very first opportunity and it's just a matter of sitting and waiting. The difference is this I've got all the performance on tap as I wish. So if I need to change down before the overtake, listen, straight away. Now there's an opportunity. Fantastic, watch this. Here we go. Now you tell me, what other car do you know that can do that so quickly? with such style. Now here you can take the car so deep into the bends and the ceramics really have all the grip. Then you can pull out, get all that acceleration in before the next bend. And the balance of the car is such that uh, you can really, really control the attitude. You can develop a sense of rhythm into the bends, knowing that the car is working with you all the time and that you've just got the right amount of attitude you need to be able to make it safe and progressive. So keep your vision well, well, well into the bend so you can plan two or three bends ahead. But my goodness, when you do, has this car got attitude? So why would you have any reason to think, well, the performance of this car can't be used? Because it can. You've just got to know when to use it, work within your own limits as well. But the more skillful you are and the more controlled you are is the more it makes sense. It's all there to be used. Just use your head as well. Just looking at the car from a distance, you can see a more efficient aerodynamic design. That culminates at the back by a thicker spoiler here that has been redesigned and wraps around the rear lamps of the car, lowering the center of gravity at the back. The front of this car is dominated by this S-duct here, which was taken from the Ferrari Pista, slightly redesigned, but what it does is it gets more air going through the central part of the car, up through this vent here in the bonnet, and it then goes back to the larger rear spoiler, which overall contributes to reducing the downforce of the car by 
One of the niche features I really like about this car is the redesigned horizontal LED headlamps. Now, these are shorter because what they've done now is they've incorporated uh, an air vent here and one underneath to bring more air through to the brakes to, to cope with the higher performance of the car without having to increase the size of the brakes. What I love about Ferrari is it's the rhythm you get with it all. The gear changes on this seven-speed gearbox are absolutely instantaneous. The car's just so well sorted. You can feel the center of the gravity behind you with the engine just pushing it down. The car is not too fast. It's just as fast as I want it to be. And with any other car, let's just say our normal day-to-day -day cars, there's going to be a limit to what you can do. But with this, there's no limit to what it can do. And this is why I think it's a better car to drive than its predecessor, the Pista, and certainly the predecessor to that, the 488 GTB. One of those things where you have to concentrate, you have to think about what you're doing, but you can balance the car with the throttle, with the brakes, and just make it all work together. It's such an integrated experience, truly emotional too. This is totally safe because the car has such high limits. It's just so safe, yet so fast and so exciting. driving this car fun is that because the thresholds are so high, because it's got more performance than you can ever really utilize, you can have fun at permissible speeds because A, you can overtake everybody quite easily, B, you've got this sort of handling which is so cool. And the car's rooted, it's safe, but you know what, what makes Ferrari, a Ferrari. You know, they talk about emotion, they talk about passion, but it's one of those things which, unless you actually experience it, you don't get it. Watch this. Woo! Oh my goodness, I love this car. Look at that. I can't think of any ordinary car, even a performance car, a hot hatch, a GT that gives you that much excitement on the road. This one does. And that's what makes a supercar special. For me, driving these two cars has just been an absolutely amazing experience. And who would have thought in the 1970s when the Dino was originally produced that you could end up with a car with the performance of the F8 Tributo? But let not that take anything away from the Dino driving experience. We just simply have two contrasting doses of adrenaline. What they both represent is the essence of enjoyable motoring. And maybe that's why I love Ferrari.